Hi, this is Mark Harrington from MyBitcoinProfits.com with the re regular review on the Bitcoin price and Bitcoin markets. This is an important review because it is the first review that I've completed since the Bitcoin halving, which happened on July the 9th. Remember last time we were we talked about the potential impact the halving was going to have on the market and that as a trade viewpoint, I was not looking at trading and I'd identified trading zone on the chart and if the price was going to head into that zone that's where I would be considering trading. So let's go and have a look at the charts and to see what has actually transpired. So as always this is the chart we were looking at on July the 1st. It's Bitcoin against the US dollar. It's a daily chart and we were looking at it on this day the 1st of July which is where this vertical cursor is here and this is where the price was. So price was in a consolidation band. It actually broke out of that band, created a new high which is higher than this one here but not as high as this one here and then is pulled back into something of a range. It created a low on the 7th of July which is this big bar here and that low is lower than the previous low here. But as it happens since the 9th of July, which is this bar here, and I will highlight the tops and the bottoms of this bar, this is July the 9th here, we'll see that since then the price has traded entirely within the high and low of the 9th of July bar. Now this may surprise many of you because we were expecting with the halving that there is a reduction of supply and what does that reduction of supply actually turn out to is that that magical number there of 8112 is what the current value of a Bitcoin block is. So the 12 and a half Bitcoin that one receives for processing a block is now worth 8112. So if you can imagine running a business where your revenues went from from twice that from 6225 per block to 8112 you would be making some decisions. So but before we can really understand what the likely ramifications of the halving are going to be, I want to step back a little bit and talk about markets and what drives prices in markets. Now you'll all know that all the prices is a summary of the supply and demand situation in the market. It's the point at which the market is believed to be in equilibrium and markets do like to find equilibrium. So you'll remember in one of my last two sessions I painted this purple line in here because that's the halfway mark between this range at the bottom and the high at the top here. So the market likes to find a point of equilibrium. As it happens, it looks more likely that this is the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point is a bit higher than we anticipated. It's in the middle of this area of ranging rather than where I had it here, which was in this middle area of ranging, which is pretty the middle of this section here. So markets like to find equilibrium. Now we can go and do some theoretical stuff about supply and demand. So I have googled supply and demand and you will find a whole bunch of charts like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a blank sheet of paper, a blank sheet of paper here and I'm just going to talk about this for you. So a supply and demand curve, two axes, price on one side, quantity on the other side. So at any particular point in time 
the market will demand a certain amount of product at given levels of price. So the higher the price, the lower the demand. So the price up here, demand will be low. And then as the price reduces, the quantity demand will increase. So we'll draw a curve like this. This is called the demand curve. So basically, as price reduces, quantity demand increases. Now the supply side is a little bit different because when the price is low the amount that people are prepared to supply will be low so it starts out here and then as price rises the quantity that people are prepared to supply will increase and you get a curve that looks like this that's the supply curve and the equilibrium point is this point in the middle where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. Now what we have in the Bitcoin market is the Bitcoin halving has created a change, potential change in the supply curve because every block that is now available is to be processed instead of getting 25 Bitcoin you're only going to get 12 and a half Bitcoin. So in theory the supply curve has been pulled back. So the number of Bitcoin that are available from mining has been reduced because of the halving. And what that should mean is, is that the equil equilibrium point has now needs to move from here to here, which means that price needs to move from here to here. And as they always say in economics, they always qualify every statement with the statement, everything else being equal. Now, as a businessman that is running a Bitcoin mining operation that has now got half the revenue for every block that they process, you have some choices to make and the choices eventually get driven by how do you pay for that electricity bill how do you pay for the people that are running your data centers and with only half the revenue and the the first place which is what I expect to happen is for a bunch of those miners is as they will increase the number of Bitcoin that they have available and put them in the marketplace. So they will basically sell Bitcoin. So we're going to sell Bitcoin. So we're going to increase the supply of Bitcoin that is available to the market since we can't get them from mining so we'll take them from our store of Bitcoin. That's the first rational response. So of course what happens is if people increase the number of Bitcoin that become available by selling the Bitcoin they're holding in store, basically what they are doing is they're going to push the price down. The second thing that they will do, and that may be driven by when they run out of Bitcoin, or if they do not have any Bitcoin available, is they will actually stop mining and basically the supply curve will then change again so they will stop mining and there will be a bunch of miners be fewer miners available and that should increase the price so if we stop mining Bitcoin price should go up so that's the basic lesson in economics. Now we've said all thing, all other things being equal, we said there's no change in the demand for Bitcoin is one of those key assumptions. Well, I just want to explore that assumption quickly. And we're going to do it by looking at a few charts. 
and the first chart I want to look at as we all know is the demand for Bitcoin so the number of Bitcoin that are being transacted is growing so this is confirmed transactions per day and doing it over all time I'll do it on a seven day average and we can see pretty clearly that this is rising and in fact for the last year this is the last year it looks as if it has increased by a step function again so the demand for Bitcoin is absolutely growing this is to be transacted so that's the first one I want to cover and the second one I want to cover is what's happening for the investment demand for Bitcoin so here the chart we're looking at is US dollar exchange trade volume this is for the last the last year I'm going to do it for two years and we'll see that it's been running in a band reasonably strongly with a few spikes and then in the last period of time so in at the end of May in the middle of June in this period of June we've had a massive spike in trading volume for Bitcoin so there are people demanding Bitcoin so that they can hold them as an investment so we've got two demand factors driving that tell me that there's something going on on this curve and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a new demand curve so this becomes D1 and as we've got a move up the demand curve whether we're on that supply curve or on that supply curve price is going to go to there or to there so we're certainly expecting price to rise and we know in this time period this is June this June time period we had this massive spike in trading volume and the price went rocketing now the interesting thing from a businessman point of view is as a businessman operating as a Bitcoin miner and I'm going to squeeze the chart up over this whole of this last so let's just take the last six months so for six months of this year we've been running a Bitcoin mining operation at a price somewhere around that $400 mark you see $400 is the mark here what is it around the $400 mark and suddenly price has increased to $640 so there is no shortage of Bitcoin miners that were able to stay in business here that are not going to go out of business here because the price has moved so dramatically so where does that leave us that leaves us with the view that says this thing may be not going to go down the way that basic economics would suggest because we've actually had a simultaneous change so while we've gone on a supply curve this way with the halving we've actually had a fundamental change in the demand curve going this way so what that means is I'm going to take a few lines boxes out of this chart and then let's see let's just do some chart analysis and the first part of chart analysis I'll draw some more trend lines in you'll be used to this by now from the top through here and from this set of lows through these here and there's no prizes for guessing what we have here we have a triangle some people will 
describe this as a pennant technically it isn't it isn't a pennant because a pennant would normally have a set of action filling in this area here but it is it is a triangle and what happens with prices when they break out of triangles is is that they do one of two things they go like this aggressively hard or they decide to come down do this and come down maybe aggressively maybe not so what we're what we're going to do about it so that's the first thing I've done we've got a triangle so basically we're looking for as always when are we going to break out of this triangle I'm now going to draw in a Fibonacci line Fibonacci retracement from this low over here through this high over here and I'm looking for my trading box and this is where my trading box is going to be typically between the 618 and the 786 which would be here but I'm comfortable with that trading box because it's a box that's emerging below this new trend line this new uptrend line but that's fine that's where I'm going to be looking for trading opportunities over here um, so I'm going to look for price to pull down to here and then break out or what I want to do is I want price to do this I want it to break out of here and test this level here this level here which has come back from from the monthly chart from some way back or to test possibly this level here which was the last high on on the run-up so that's what my trading avenues are for Bitcoin what else do we look at I'm going to do one more thing two more things where has this demand for Bitcoin come from and to my mind the answer lies absolutely firmly square in this chart this is the US dollar against the Chinese renminbi this is the offshore currency the CNH is the Chinese renminbi and we see here that through May consolidating consolidating and then we've got this massive run up here where it's gone from 640 640s to 670s at a time when the Chinese government is actually been trying to control the growth or the weakness sorry the weakness of its currency so the growth of the US dollar against its currency so to to my sense is, is that and I've said this before this is exactly where the demand the investment demand for Bitcoin has come from and and then the last area that I want to cover is what about the alternatives Just want to explore Ethereum we've talked about Ethereum Ethereum has not yet resolved whether to do a soft fork and a hard fork to overcome the heist that squirreled 50 million dollars worth of Ethereum away those Ethereum have been isolated they cannot be spent by the people who stole them but they haven't worked out yet how to return them and the Ethereum price looks like it has found a level and that level happens to be around this dotted red line which I drew in absolutely months ago it's remarkably also looks like the equilibrium level for the market uh, so my sense on Ethereum is, is that there's a trading opportunity somewhere here once they resolve their technical choices on the soft fork versus the hard fork and we get the right sort of price re reversal we will see Ethereum bounce off this level and head upwards and of course if they don't resolve that soft fork hard fork decision it's going to break below here 
so there's our summary sorry our overview of the Bitcoin market so I've drawn some new lines in here so we've got a triangle I'm looking for a pullback into a Fibonacci important level and I will add one more thought to the chart let's just have a look at the momentum indicators use MACD first MACD is still above zero so it is bullish but what we're really looking for it to do is to turn and head upwards MACD will give us an indicator when it's ready to turn upwards and let's have a look at the alternate momentum indicators I have looked at them already today and the RSI and the stochastic are basically giving me the same story the RSI so the relative strength index is absolutely tracking right in the middle of the range so that we we cannot tell whether this is overbought or oversold it's certainly not looking oversold certainly not looking overbought and what we're really looking for it to do is to track down and to do this or to um, show as a level of divergence divergence that will indicate what it's doing there is no divergence here you see these lows here they're all nice and level and these lows here are all nice and level these this the shape of this is very consistent with the shape here so there are no clues from RSI as to what the momentum is going to be which way this thing is going to break so we, as always need to be patient wait for the break and then look for the trade out of the triangle upwards to retest the level or to break down below here and retest the level my instinct tells me and my analysis on transaction volume and investment volume is is that it's not going to break down so that's it for this week happy bitcoining and happy trading